Maximilian, um, I remember a couple of months ago, we were cracking open some cold ones uh, at your home. And I said, Max, what is the greatest thing in the world? And you said. Tacos. Tacos, which yeah. is correct. But after that, you said also f also fighting games. Oh, yeah, that's all there. There's easily second best. Yes. And after that, I was like, yeah, yeah. But you know what the world also needs more of? Fighting games. And podcasts. I've never heard of a podcast before. That's it's, what is that? Do we like talking new, to some sort of new device? Tech, new brand new technology. It's cutting edge. And then I, I say, you know what? You've been doing content with uh, Justin Wong. I think he's won a few tournaments. I don't I don't know what he's done. But and I've been doing some content with him. And we said, why don't we just smush all these three things into something? Well, what should we call it? And Justin came up with an I came up with a name. And what is this name, uh, Mr. Wong, sir? Uh, you know, it was because there was one, two, three people. I decided that maybe we call it Triple KO. Why not? Triple KO. You know, it's not. It's, we don't have triple KOs in fighting games, but we're gonna make it happen eventually. That's a lot better than mine, which was the uh, the third ass blast. <laughs> hey, that's not bad. That's the, it was close. Like, that's like my favorite like, fighting game mechanic is the ass blast. <laughs> mine was the fighting dump, and it's, that's not great. <laughs> fighting <laughs> dump. dump. <laughs> Max, yours should have been bo booty copter. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. Booty copter. <laughs> yeah, appropriate. Uh, appropriate for for our subject today which is which is what what are we talking about what what is our inaugural uh, triple ko i i think i think today we we live for the characters right i, I think that the thing we always sort of talk about uh I, I, all of us right that that when it comes across fighting games is how important characters are mm -hmm. and obviously like the biggest fighting games of all time now are the ones that always have really exorbitant rosters you know there's always some sort of weird, kooky, like, weird character that people can get attached to, like a piranha plant or something like that, <laughs> that people will just love for some obscure fetish-related reason. And uh, I think it's good to have a conversation about, like, those characters in general, um, much less some of the games that have, like, some of the best characters, if not. I, I think we could also talk about that, too, like, rosters, before we get mm -hmm. into, like, our own personal hot takes of um what our what our favorite characters are and i also think let me know if you guys would like this should we try to guess who each other's favorite characters are that's strong Ooh. idea strong yeah, that's a strong, strong idea one. i strong think we can do idea. that we could have like have a round robin where i can guess that like you know matt's M matt's favorite character or justin's favorite character and then you actually tell us one of your favorite characters and then we can go over it um, yeah, you can you can like throw out three characters and see if any of those hit. Them stick. Any of those are yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so so why why don't we start off with that? Like, do you? Okay, no, you should ask one of us then. I, I should think. ask one of you. You know, in fact, yeah. I want to I want to ask you guys because we're, if we're on the topic of characters today, I, I want to get your introspection because I've been talking about characters and fighting games and how important they are on on the YouTubes for. Good Lord knows how long. So I feel like I'm mostly out here naked and uh, unarmored. <laughs> Everyone knows. Everyone Everybody knows. Everybody knows. Like, yeah, kind uh, of. But in terms of like overall rosters, right? I'm kind of curious. Two things. Like, what's your favorite character roster? Like, which game? Like Matt, for example. Which game is your favorite fighting game slash roster? Like, in terms of like all the characters that are in it. Um. Th this is kind of a cheat, but. Because it has almost everyone you kind of want, but the console version of Street Fighter Alpha Three is mm. like one of the greatest Street Fighter rosters I'd say there is. Like uh, four and 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 five at the end of all the DLC, also really strong. But seeing a lot of characters you didn't think would ever gonna come back, like uh, the new challengers yeah. uh, from Super Street Fighter, just being in the Alpha art style is exciting to see older characters in that alpha art style especially ones you you wouldn't expect to see and then you like had like if you go into like uh alpha three upper and they're just like eh, yun mackie yeah. it doesn't matter yeah. anymore i was gonna, I was gonna ask random like, characters are, are you specifically saying like the like the the dreamcast slash playstation version or are we talking like alpha three max which went really crazy 
I okay on the base level, I'm going to say the Dreamcast like PlayStation version yeah. because the the Alpha uh, uh, Alpha Three Max on the PSP was like almost too nuts. Like that that it, these characters don't even make sense that yeah. they're here. Any like Yun makes no sense. Uh, yeah, he me, should like, be, he should not be born. <laughs> to, to me, I, I never really got into Alpha Three too much. So it's funny because I loved Alpha Two, but I always mm-hmm. admired the roster how it was like. Alpha had its own roster, you know, how it had like the Rose and the Birdie roster and all that kind of weird stuff. Well, you saw the Ken Ryu and the Chuns, but then you had a bunch of Final Fight characters. So it felt yeah. like a weird spin off Street Fighter until Alpha 3. And they're just like, forget it, man. Guile, DJ, uh, E Honda. <laughs> like, they're just going to make new sprites for all the old characters all of a sudden. And that it, w- it wasn't even an Alpha game anymore. It's like, oh, this isn't everybody. Like, everybody's in here now, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh- and like kind of the, the why the PSP version does it's because it's like a dream match at that point. Yeah, I think like dream matches are like technically like you can't really say like look at that roster. The whole point of a dream match is like let's make a ridiculous roster, let's bring back characters that sh- should not be here. So it's kind of that's like a gray area for me. Um, just one other one that that sh- comes to the forefront of my mind is like Tekken Five for some reason. I remember going around the Tekken 5 roster just going, oh, there's just, he's there, she's there, cool, cool, cool. And I liked a lot of the characters there. It was like Tekken 4 was really paired back. Sure. Um, and Tekken 3 was paired back. Well, maybe not so much the home version of that, but Tekken f- uh, 3 was paired back in the sense that they're like, ah, eh, they're, they're missing, they're missing. They have all these old uh, cool new characters. But like Tekken 5 was a one that brought back some people in like a, you know, slightly different way. and Like Bruce and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, but not too crazy. Not and too crazy. Tekken Five still yeah. like you know like a canon game, so that one is up there. And um, like MK Nine, obviously had a really good solid roster. Everyone you could, everyone you could want, and none of the idiots from the 3D games are there. Yeah, except for Kenshi because that's the one guy you that's do the, want. The one that was cool. Yeah, <laughs> was Fujin like in there? It, it's weird Fujin because a lot of these not. games are like trying to chase those rosters. You know, mm. and they like have pieces of those rosters, but they don't eventually have like the entire thing, and they're just sort of like eventually building up to what everybody sort of wants. Like MK9 is a good example. I'd say like Tekken Five to like Tekken Tag Two. Another great example, because Tekken Tag 2 just has, like, the kitchen sink of Tekken characters, yeah. you know? True. And depending on your version, it's got m- Nintendo characters in there yeah, in, a, exactly. in, a, in, a, in a slight way. Um, but those those are, like, off the top of my head, those are, like, I remember those rosters being, like, really solid. Like, sure. I didn't, you know, you look at Street Fighter 3, you're like, eh, I wish, you know, the, the, the favorite I liked from the old games was there. Or I would love to have seen, you know, this character in the Street Fighter 3 art style. Um, but those are the ones that I personally really liked. Yeah. And Justin, I got a pretty good idea of which is your personal favorite roster in fighting games. It's mostly gonna it's mostly gonna boil back to things that might actually be rhyming with uh Harble versus Mapcom <laughs> too. But you know, I'm just gonna ask you, what's your personal favorite roster in fighting games? It's a good guess. Uh Mars Kagam 2 is definitely one of my favorites, but I would say personally my favorite favorite character roster is probably actually capcom versus snk2 that's a good call uh yeah mm-hmm. i like that one a lot just because it was just a huge upgrade compared to cvs1 oh, right yeah. where with the racial system and everything but i think what was really cool was they added a really a, a good amount of new characters right so they had toto from final from uh, art of fighting that we haven't really seen in the capcom sprites and they did him very well um athena was in there habiki haramaru they just they really added a lot of interesting new characters here's what's in funny cvs2 y- and y- i love y- that you're actually mentioning the exact same things that i think about the cvs2 roster and it's not the capcom side it's the yeah, CV- I know. it's the snk side the snk side they- is really improved yeah, they did a great job with like I think Capcom does a great job when they're adding like collaboration characters. Even like Street mm. Fighter Cross Tekken, where the Tekken characters had to play like Capcom characters, they did a great job there as well too. But I really felt like they knocked it out the park with uh, SNK characters in their own way, right? Six buttons for SNK characters was like unheard of. So now they have to have these medium punches <laughs> and medium kicks, and they worked very well. 
The SNK characters are like throwing out normals that they've never seen before. <laughs> never like, seen before. What is, what? I've never been able to extend this way. <laughs> the uh, only thing about the Capcom versus SNK two roster is like I'll never understand who I'm picking because the portraits are all like the Shinkiro art, and they all like so many characters look the same. And you're like, oh, you have to see their name flash up, right? And you're like, okay, there's Joe, does there's any, Kyo. The, does you anybody know? actually remember the old meme where it's like, oh, whole roster was George Clooney? <laughs> the George. old Shinkiro art style was like the Clooney art style. It was it Clooney or was it Mel Gibson? No, it was definitely it was Clooney. The Clooney. Okay. Wow, it was the Clooney. everyone said that all the male characters from Shinkiro around the CVS two art style was like <laughs> they looked like George Clooney. I'm like, I mean, right, they're right. they're not. When you look at his early early SNK art, like you know, like summer special oh, pictures man. of like uh, of Keo or, or his team, and like the, and everyone's like playing with like beach balls and stuff. That's when like every face, like he just traced them at that yeah. point. Like, he, he was just like, I don't care. It doesn't matter the faces. Shinkiro's you know? one of like the gods now of fighting game art because he's been in he's been in the business for so long. But yeah, that that's an artist that you can see over the years like all the way going to even modern day fighting games like street fighter 5 slash uh marvel 3 and stuff like that for uh capcom which he eventually worked for for many years you can see such a dramatic increase in style and perspective and he really like he really like hones in on his own and sticks with it and it looks better and better i remember when tatsunoko versus capcom's art came out oh dude he it was so sick looking i was like damn Shinkiro got good. Like, wow, this is this is really <laughs> cool. Good. <laughs> and like, even the Marvel versus Capcom three art, like, I think for Ultimate, like, oh, he had yeah. those awesome layouts where it was like a Wolverine like clashing with like I think not Deadpool. I, I think it was like Ryu actually. You know the one where it's like there's a bunch of characters yeah, in the back, like, yeah, but then Wolverine yeah. and and I was like that. That's also to me like holy crap, you're so good, Matt. Please <laughs> use this man on your box art more, Matt. Please make a note. We we need an episode where we talk about the the old fighting game artists, the gods. I'm putting no no I'm fighting putting that game down. artists. Is that is I'm that already that a down. note? We have to have an episode where we like talk about like the sickest art styles no, and no. classic fighting games and stuff, and you know the ones that still carry on to this day. Good have call, Maximilian. <laughs> <laughs> God, um, God artist, God artist, that. God artist. <laughs> Justin, my my other question to you regarding CVS two. Uh, do you feel the same way about that roster that a lot of people do? Where obviously the SNK side is like the hero of that game in my in my personal opinion, and apparently yours. Do you feel the Capcom side of that roster is like shockingly lacking? How it's mostly just SNK versus Street Fighter. Yeah, I mean you have Maki, right? Maki, Rolento. Uh, I can't even think of other characters Kiyosuke off my head, was but like the one yeah, Kiyosuke, one. Yeah. yeah, right. But it would have been pretty cool. I don't, I don't know, like you know, adding like maybe more Dark Stalkers characters. Obviously, you have like that random solo Morgan that's always in oh, every yeah. Capcom game. But having like Dimitri or maybe like you know how Capcom Fighting Jam, you know, you did a video about it on Map Capcom sure. Fighting Jam. What happened? But ultimately, they had they had a good idea, right? They had the Warzards, um, and they had the Dark Stalkers characters. It's technically Capcom's only ever released Capcom All Star game. Yeah, it so, is. It's so sad. Unfortunate. <laughs> the the idea the idea behind that was so good, um, especially when I found out that bit that there was supposed to be a Street Fighter One team. Yeah. When I learned about that, I was like, holy crap, that was, I mean, it's a great idea in theory, and it would be nice to see these characters be played not in Street Fighter 1, so you don't have to, like, you know, degrade yourself, but, like, that that was that was a missed opportunity, because they had every era of Street Fighter up to that point, Alpha and Street Fighter 3, blah, 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 Yeah, and, like, that is a, a bad roster that game has in terms of its missed potential. Yeah. That could have been a godlike roster. Like sure. that should have had that should have had rival schools. That should have had a Power Stone ro roster, yes. you know? It should have and, had the uh, things that were in like Marvel versus Capcom games, right? Mm -hmm. But for some reason games like CVS2 and even Fighting Gem, they don't. They stay really close to like just the fighting game characters because yeah. ultimately the budget concerns it was still a complete burn that a character like Eagle, who was new to CVS2, had a new sprite and was like, oh, this is a Street Fighter 1 character, this is badass, didn't show up? I'm like, this is whack, dude! Like, an Eagle still has not <laughs> been in anything. I, I'm sorry, he eventually got added to um, Alpha 3 Max, Alpha which 3. was yeah. the one you were talking about. But yeah, that's like a great character sprite from a long-forgotten game that very, very few people, I would argue, even know who the hell Eagle is, you know? 
Yeah. yeah. It would have um, been cool to even ha- have... Like, I mean, you know how Street Fighter Five they had so many Final Fight characters. Final Fight, yeah. there's a lot of characters in, in that game, and I think they would have worked very well in CVS2 for sure. They had, the, you know, their names, their ideas, their movesets already. I mean, they have Rolento uh, and Maki, but it would have definitely been... It would have made sense if they had Guy and Cody in there, at least. It'd be really sick if they could create, like, a Final Fight fighting game and call it, like, Final Fight Revenge, and you could <laughs> pick up weapons. That'd be so godlike. I am, yeah. a, wow. I am a weird defender. Great idea. Who, who is you? <laughs> I am a weird defender. I think that game's, like, crazy in the best ways. I And I will defend your defense of it as well. <laughs> and, like, and I have I set up my own defense, because I... Okay, it's a bad game, as we all know. Sure. But in terms of Final Fight at that time, it was a pretty solid roster, but it was still missing the heroes. Like, it was still missing uh, Lucia from, yeah. like, uh, Final Fight 3 and Street Fighter 5, right? And it was missing Carl. It was missing some heroes, but in terms of it doing Final Fight 1, it was like that was all the characters. Yeah. Those were all the ones with actual personality. So, you know, we can make jokes about Final Fight Revenge all we want, but at the time, that was a pretty good roster, too, I it's guess. It's not terrible. And and I, I am I'm a firm defender that, like, they're kind of crazy ideas, although it's a, it's a jank feeling game. Dude, you, like, jumping in a chopper as Rolento and gunning a bitch down... <laughs> like in pursuit from above a top down perspective i'm like this is crazy in kind of the best way like it's and not like, balanced or great but it's kind of like insanely cool that you're doing this in a fighting game you know and some yeah. characters have like custom combo supers which you would not expect from not expect, like, yeah. some like cody is it cody like got a custom combo super C- cody and i think uh damned like thrasher like i think he has one too uh, it did. It did have some good ideas. I'm still super proud to own my hard copy, which which I believe the <laughs> no AVGN, way. which I believe the yeah yeah the uh, AVGN like burnt it on a video. You you actually have a hard copy of Final Fight Revenge on Saturn. Yeah, I sleep with it under my bed. I you sleep under the bed. Dude, that is worth a ridiculous <laughs> amount of money. That is like that is like NFT crypto garbage. Like you can <laughs> no, uh, but over unlike, time you'll be able to sell that for a lot. But unlike but unlike NFTs and crypto, this has actual worth. You know, so. Um, <laughs> It's a physical product. <laughs> I, I, I don't mind this question, so feel free to ask. How much do you think I paid for that 10 years ago? I want to say I got it like 10, 8, something like so years it, ago. So it had, had a box and instructions, right? Uh, it was just the ju- it was just the jewel case. Like it didn't have like a big box. It was just the sure. jewel case. It, yeah, because the Saturn Ju- one was just like a regular yeah. CD yeah. case. Yeah, yeah, the, um, yeah. So it, was, it had ago, the instructions. I say the instructions. it was because it was a Japanese game, and Saturn games weren't worth nearly as much. Maybe a hundred bucks. Okay, Justin, do you have a bucks. Th- oh, man, throw out I, a number? I want to say seventy five ninety nine. Seventy five ninety nine. This price is right right now. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to I'm thinking about like I'm thinking, to go like I'm thinking about mom and pop stores, you know, All mom right. and pops Japanese stores. Two hundred and seventy five dollars. That is wow. an insane deal. By yeah, okay. it was, it, it was, it's paid for itself a thousand fold over. I'm literally going to eBay <laughs> right now. Hold on a sec. I've literally <laughs> Let me go I'm check get a prime final fight revenge full. So uh, That'll lead into, I was in Seattle at a con years ago, and Justin Silverman said, hey, can we borrow your copy of Final Fight Revenge? Uh, and AVGN will, like, you know, in the future do a review of it. And I was like, yeah, no, tell, here you go. And, like, two years later, a video got made, and they sent, they sent it back to me, uh, thankfully. You, uh, but uh, I was very, very happy about that. Well, your that. investment was Were definitely worth it, because <laughs> now it's worth twofold or more. Yes. So it's like 400 to 500 bucks for oh my, a Japanese wait, 10 Saturn more years, game, which most <laughs> Japanese Saturn games aren't worth that much. In the future, I'm going to be able to put my cats through cat college. It's going to be great. I like it. I'm actually curious if you could find like, so Japan, they sell like these games like super cheap when you go to like Akihabara. So I'm very curious. Maybe you could find like the copy there as well, too. I'd like to like, cause uh, I have not been in Japan, but with that fact you just said, I'm like, yeah, I've heard that from lots of people. Like when you actually go in person in a store, they're like, yeah, take this, take this Panzer Dragoon Saga. Take it. We'll pay you. Yeah, pretty <laughs> much. They're, they're cheap. <laughs> the like biggest dollars. reasoning, the biggest reasoning behind the giant price difference in Japan. Cause I'm a, I'm an avid Saturn shithead. 
uh, you are. Is, is because in the U.S., they just didn't make a lot of copies of the games. Saturn was super mm. popular in Japan, so they just made a ton. You can get, like, I've got my full box X-Men versus Street Fighter with the RAM cart. I was like 30 bucks, <laughs> like in box, Jeez. and it's in a yeah. really good condition. But that's simply because they made a lot of them. Like, there's mm -hmm. just way more quantity. So if you want to buy Panzer Dragon Saga here, that's like 1000 1200 bucks. You want to yeah. go to Japan, it's like $30, maybe 50 Yeah, so cheap, so <clears throat> cheap. Much different. <laughs> I love um, how garbage tier I am. It's like, you keep your Panzer Dragoon Saga, I'll keep my Final Fight Revenge. <laughs> it's a fair trade. I like the it's box art on trade. it, too. It's a good looking. I like the art style of the game a lot. What's uh, the subtitle of Final Fight Revenge uh, that, that's on the box art? Do you remember? I'm, I'm looking at it. Yo, what? I know that I know the, the sub. It has this little subtitle. Oh, that's versus <laughs> Violent Storm Rising. Hmm. <laughs> Wow. That sounds like a super. I just had to look at it. Violent it, Storm. That's definitely a McMuscles. That's definitely a series of videos waiting to happen from Matt. That's just, that is so in my wheelhouse. Oh, I love it. <laughs> so, um, uh, the roster stuff, right, is yeah. also critically important for fighting games. And even, even going back to some minor, very obscure games like Final Fight Revenge that really delve into the history of Final Fight and try to, like, pick out as much as possible to remain as faithful. It shows, and that, that game even has a little bit of notoriety because of it. I'd say, uh, for me, and this is, gonna, this is gonna feel like kind of a cop-out, because we have our classic fighting game releases, and we have our ones that are really attached to, but I can't, like, even with my ridiculous history with the genre, and, and people are gonna be mad at me, but I think people should not be mad at me, <laughs> when I tell you the greatest roster in fighting game history is Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. Well, you know, it, 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 even... it's pretty good. Well, I, I have to agree. It's, it's, it's okay, pretty good. Right? It's all right. It's like, I, I can't help but after, after playing this game like locally casually for like so many years and seeing it grow and evolve and trying every character out as they came out practically, I, I can't help but be like, so this was the game that really just gave it its all in terms of roster, right? It was the most yeah. important thing for them. It's what they spent, like, all their budget on, and they knew. It's like Sakurai knows that characters make fighting games. That's just the way it goes. So we're just going to spend all our money on characters and, and celebrating those characters. And, Max, you made the point, because I... I want to say once a month, I'll just look back at your reaction video to the Terry gameplay showcase. I'll just watch it and just be like, like how happy this motherfucker is. Anyway, um, Dude. you made the, you make the point that goes Sakurai, you know, really liked, um, S and K games growing up and stuff, but that same care and attention where he's like, oh, all the characters uh, from KOF games need to be surrounding the ring. Oh, Terry gets these colors. There's these little things. He made sure to do that for every character gets those that amount of detail yeah. that was added to Smash. And because he does know exactly what you said, that um, he knows how important these characters are. If like uh, Kazuya came into Smash and was like, I don't know. He has a like a basic move set, and that's it. Like he has his he has his uh, smash specials, and that's it. And here's like a basic stage, and that's it. But it's like no, everything they could have done to make Kazuya fit into Smash, it's like it was done. Yeah, and they he did that. The for that was the best they release. Did, they didn't half ass it, and they're like, so which one's Kazuya again? They're like, okay, never mind, I got it. So he walks in, mm -hmm. and he's like, the answer lies in the heart of battle. And he's like, wait, <laughs> wait, that might that might not be the right. What does Ryu say? And Ryu's like, I'll kill my grandfather. <laughs> like, they get a little mixed up. <laughs> Wait, was that the... Is, is, Kazuya's the one with the meme, right? It's Kazuya Shoto. Was that the Smash meme? Do you remember that? Yes, I made a video about that. <laughs> right? Kazuya's a Shoto. I, that, that was the, 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 the Smash meme, right? Because Smash Brothers is a wonderful game that has such a large audience of players that have such a huge variety of age ranges and uh, yeah. mental acuity that <laughs> <laughs> you get some people that just have no flippin' clue what these characters are from. So Kazuya shows up and they're like, not another Shoto. And it's like, <laughs> what? what did you just call him? <laughs> So I had to like, you know, we had to make a video of describing what a Shoto is, and that's now like a forever meme. Like it, the, the, the meme what, is what so is good. a Shoto, you know? Or they made a uh, Terry Bogart. People were like, oh, that that's buff uh, Pokemon trainer. <laughs> <laughs> I never heard that. <laughs> yeah, that's buff Pokemon trainer. <laughs> That's dope. I, I that no no. That's it. Terry's buff Pokemon trainer <laughs> for now on, right? 
<laughs> if you train really hard, kid, you can also do a Buster Wolf one day. <laughs> yeah, so Smash Brothers is like almost cheating. You know, it's like it's like of course that's the one. I, I, I it's it took so much time and effort to to just love the shit out of its characters that it's hard for me to acknowledge whether or not it got the characters I directly wanted. I never end up getting Wolverine, you know, for Smash. That was a long time hope and dream. Or that insane time where you're all like, yeah, Sub-Zero's coming. Yeah, Sub that was gonna coming. happen, man. I, <laughs> I don't think you. so. Never. There was definitely a <laughs> moment not. where there was going to be a Sub-Zero care. I swear to God. But it I, didn't. But that How was fatalities like work? But that was like Sakurai posted a picture of outside. He's like, oh, it's chilly today. And then all of your video games is like, <gasps> <laughs> It was an interesting time, okay? It was a pre-pandemic time, right? Mine okay, were free. Fair enough. <laughs> we, were, we were definitely <laughs> looking to, there was endless possibility at that time, okay? It was a much different time for the human race. But, fair uh, enough, fair yeah, enough. Smash Brothers is my number one call. I have another question, and this one might be a bit more challenging in terms of the roster and characters. Um... I'm going to ask you guys, what is the best roster in fighting games that doesn't have an exorbitant amount of characters like like mm. CVS 2 or like like Tekken, like Tekken oh. 5 or yeah, even, even Tekken Smash 5 Brothers. is the ones Tekken that actually have like limited characters that are I'm not going to like put a number on it, but like potentially less than like 30 that really show like, dang, this game doesn't have a lot of characters, but it has all the characters you need. OK, hmm. Well, I don't know if it's over 30 or not, but this this game that I think it's really bad. I never really had fun of it, but I thought the character roster was amazing was uh SNK vs Capcom. I thought that was a pretty awesome character roster. That's not Lots a bad call. Characters. SVC Chaos, um, right? Yeah, SVC Chaos. I thought that one was <laughs> You're right, you're fantastic, right. Fantastic, but um yeah, like so many different variety characters. Like you said, you know how you said how Capcom was, it was like SK versus Street Fighter. Yeah. But for the Capcom side, they had Tessa, right? From That's a good that point. That was amazing. Hugo. So I thought they did, they did, a, they took a lot of risk. Yeah. Zero. Like, CBS <laughs> Zero. Is that everyone loves for like gameplay reasons and stuff like that. SVC is sort of weird on gameplay, but SCV has like the way better Capcom side of the roster. Like they have way yeah. cooler, like it feels like a Marvel versus Capcom roster instead of just Street Fighter, you know? Yeah, so I thought that if they had Violent Ken, they introduced him. That was the coolest character for like that that's that period of time. He was really cool. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a good I didn't even think of that. That's a really good call. And then there's like another version that is like a an arcade ROM hack or something that you can play beyond the 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 the, the core release where you can actually play like a whole bunch more characters. Like there's like a lot yeah, like more the bosses. That they added. Yeah, yeah. It, I forget which one it is, but you can play it on uh Fightcade. It's yeah. like it's like um, SVC Chaos like plus or something like that. Yeah. Like that's yeah, yeah, okay. That that is a really interesting pick because I remember seeing SVC Chaos in, in an arcade near my college. It was like this little like bar like sort of thing that had like billiards and whatever. And it was there and I was like, this is so weird because you're playing it and you know the, that game is actually unfinished they like yeah. did not get to finish it and but you could see the potential there but i remember going around the ro roster and i think someone had unlocked a few characters i can't remember if that was a time release game in the arcades like characters were just unlock i i don't really know the mechanics of that but i remember going around I'm like this is a really cool roster it's like yeah there's people still missing but it's eclectic like like street fighter 3 eclectic where it's like well these are weird characters but there's someone for everyone yeah if you like shodos they're obviously there if you like you know weird characters like oh mars people is there yeah fantastic. Yep, that's so cool <laughs> yeah it is cool yeah um, yeah it, it's like that's like the one kind of tragedy of SNK at the time frame was that they were just so hammered and they just wanted to do something with that acquisition, that deal with Capcom that they just like pumped something out as fast as they friggin could. And yeah, to try to like, still, save like, the company. okay, like I think a game gets a bit more hate than, than most. And then you actually learn about like a lot of the mechanics that are in the game. And you're like, wait a minute, you could do what? <laughs> like <Yeah. laughs> there's so many weird kitchen sink things that are just like thrown in that. Like, I don't think I've ever seen anybody do this even competitively. And you only realize that halfway through your videos, because every time I've seen you going back yes. to SVC Chaos, you're like, I hate this game. I hate, I hate it. Say hi. And then halfway through, you're like, you can do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's always um, that moment. You, you know what I felt was a really strong roster at the start? It wasn't like because it had a, an amount of characters. It was from a more recent game. 20, the 2019 Samurai Showdown. 
Mm. Its core roster, I was like, I don't know. These are the classic characters that I yeah. wanted to see. And they're newer, weirder characters from like later, like uh Basara, the guy with the uh like uh the chainsaw, glaive. the sickle, yeah, the, sickle. The, the glaive thing, and like um the 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 titty maid, uh whatever <laughs> her name is, titty <laughs> the maid. DLC characters, uh, yeah. The, the DLC characters. Those are like those characters made perfect sense for DLC. Um guy from For Honor. Yeah, maybe not. I don't yeah, know. that was random. That it that was very felt random. Like a, that felt like a, a very uh, aggressive tie-in kind of situation. Yeah, but 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 hey, SNK, get that Ubisoft money if you want to take <laughs> that hustle from them. That's good. But the the core roster itself, when I boot up the game, I'm like, here's all these classic characters. Not every single one. Oh, here's a cool new character. Well, yep. there's two. There was Darley, and then there's that that ninja guy, and I was like. That's all I really need from a samurai yeah. showdown right now. And then they made that roster even better with the DLC and then Biken, obviously. Um, so I think that, and uh, was there one more guest character? There was Warden. Hibiki. Hibiki. Ah, uh, Hibiki. Hibiki. Oh, that was really Yeah, because she, she, she always feels like she was a Sam Show character, most likely because she was next to Haomaru in CVS 2. But yeah, yep. they, they combined Last Blade universe. I have, I have a... Uh, uh, something to admit is that for a long time I thought Hibiki was a Capcom character because where she was <laughs> positioned in Capcom versus SNK2 I just thought I'm like oh she's from some weird Capcom game like not Sansan but like there's a game out there that's like Sansan and I only played Last Blade later and I was like ah there I go okay it, All right, you could you could have probably thought of it from Warriors of Fate that like Chinese Capcom beat em up game yeah 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 that's exactly what I it, thought your actually. impression Matt of like the, the, these characters is kind of similar to me because I I wasn't a huge uh, I was aware of SNK but I was kind of once again like a, a Capcom snob right you had a lot of arcades back in the day especially in like SoCal and even New York and Justin's talked about this a couple times before but they were very Capcom centric right so a lot of mm. the big competitive areas uh, were so focused on that, that SNK games, unfortunately, kind of got brushed aside. So I just didn't get to play a lot of them um, until recently. But mm. yeah, it, it, funny enough, games like CVS 2 are actually the games that made me appreciate SNK. Because the majority of SNK characters, in my opinion, in CVS 2 are the fun ones. You know, yes, they, they look cooler. They're, they're more enjoyable to play. And then while, while the Street Fighter side is arguably really good, I'm like, dude, all these SNK characters are sick, though. <laughs> like, wow, like they're, they're Vice is in here and you got like Iori and Kyo and like, well, this is Terry's great and Geese is like, this is super cool. Um, to me, I just wasn't really aware of that. CVS2 was like the, the bridging of the gap to me personally. And I've heard that from a lot of people where it's like mm -hmm. CVS2 was the game to put like SNK on the map for a lot of Capcom fans. And that's essentially like the goal. You know, when you have these crossover yeah. games to get awareness to the other side that they have no idea what's going on in the same way that like a lot of the Marvel versus Capcom 2 roster on the Marvel end was like, who the hell is this? <laughs> like, what's a marrow? <laughs> what the hell's going on? Like, who's a marrow? In, yeah, introduces that <laughs> stuff. So you have like an idea, some perspective of what's what's going on, you know, so CBS 2 is definitely that game for me. It, here, here's like a little random one off. I'll try to keep it short that when I did a video on MK versus DC, uh, what happened on that game. Um, there was a quote from like a Midway guy that was like, or I think it was actually a Warner Brothers guy. It doesn't matter. Um, and he goes, well, the whole point was like, hey, everyone, like check out these maybe like cool superheroes you haven't seen that often in like fighting games. And the reverse of their marketing strategy was, hey, DC fans, check out, you know, Mortal Kombat characters. They're pretty cool. Check and out these like, Mortal Kombat freaks. <laughs> <laughs> check out their awesome fatalities in this game, you know. Um, but I, I, I made a gag where I was like, someone saying like, hey, maybe the who's the like the quote was, who is this weird ninja guy, Scorpion? I've never heard of him. And in my mind, it's like, how how are you buying games for the Xbox 360 and you have no idea who Scorpion is? Yeah. I just made a gag. Yeah. I'm like, that's dumb marketing speak. Shut up. Yeah. And I was <laughs> I was kind of corrected where I want to say like, I got like a 15% of comments were like, actually, yeah, I was pretty young when this game came out. I didn't know about Mortal Kombat. And like, I know this game is janky, but 
it made me a fan of Mortal Kombat. I was like, yeah, who is this kooky scorpion? <laughs> and like this this fine fellow named Kano. I want to know more about this, them. This fine Damn. fellow that jumps in the air and slams you down aggressively. And, and that's it. And he has and he's vaguely from Australia. <laughs> and that that's just like a weird game where I'm like, huh, I guess that did work in that instance of trying to um, especially for Warner Brothers and Nether and Midway at the time, they were they were kind of very copacetic and wanted to do something together, and they they, they kind of collaborated uh, well before that uh, that Warner Brothers bought them. And it, the interesting thing that you bring up about Capcom vs SNK two, where you're saying the SNK side were more fun to play, I thought that as well. I had played K- KOF games like ninety four, ninety five, maybe a bit of ninety eight on like the PlayStation. Yeah. The only thing about Capcom versus SNK2 is that you look at the sprites and because Capcom just also making a lot of games at that point, the only thing about the SNK characters is that visually they're just a little bit off. Like their shading, their their design of the sprites is just a little bit flatter and a little bit not as fun as the alpha sprites that you've seen before sure. in Ryu and Ken's yeah. redrawn cool sprites. I love those sprites. Like th- those particular older Ken and Ryu sprites that they use in Capcom vs. SNK. Yeah, and the then ones they made specifically in- for the CVS series, yeah. Uh, and Bisons too, obviously. Because yeah. they're like, uh, the arts, st- we went too crazy with the alpha art style. They look too chunky or they're too young. <laughs> Which is funny because they just brought them all back, like Blanca and Balrog and Honda. Like they're just <laughs> yeah. their alpha sprites. Like, forget it. Yeah. But but that's because these are the characters we care that Capcom cares about. They don't care about Blanca. They're just like, ah, who cares? But Bison was interesting in CVS because he was that was like a brand new sprite. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For, for 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 Bison, he's not from like S like Street Fighter Two or try to go back to the, the Alpha SF2 series. Yeah, yeah, but like it, yeah, it, they just made it interesting because like he had such interesting moves, especially in CVS One, like. He had crazy movesets that like no cycle crusher, just a super, but he has like these like two hitting attack moves. And I thought that was like really cool that they try to make him different. And yeah, also his sprite has the biggest, most aggressive wanking off hand. <laughs> like, you know, like that's Bison always stance. been there, bro. That's yeah, the but, stance in general. <laughs> no, but in that game particularly, he's like really jerking it super hard. Like it's a blur, man. Bro, Street Fighter 2 is the same thing. He's going super fast. Put, put play Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. It's I'll, faster. I'll, I'll go. I'll go back and look at it. I just remember making that point. I'm like, wow, he's really he's burning the midnight oil there. I think, With a stone cold face agree. too. Like CVS2 Bison Sprite, probably the best Bison's ever looked without being too uh thick and chunky. Right. Yeah. Like, thick and chunky soup Bison is what they essentially approved in the Alpha series. And then yeah. he got used in all like the versus games and stuff like that. So you have like meat cake bison, and then meat you have like bison. relatively normal, just tall human bison. Yeah, no, he's like uh, he's like a whole bowl of oatmeal that bison. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I, I I realized I didn't say mine. Um, in terms of like limited roster, oh, yeah. and I, I'm pretty sure you guys will be able to call this, but uh, for its size and how many characters were in it, I will defend till the day that. For about 16 characters, not including secret characters, this is the sickest roster of all co- all time. Marvel vs. Capcom 1. Capcom 1. Yeah. yeah. You know what? Yeah, Capcom because, 1's pretty darn good. Because there were so many new, cool sprites in yeah. that one, like yeah. and characters you hadn't seen in a, in a while. So, yeah. yeah. So, MVC 1 was like the introduction of uh, what would eventually be like some of my favorite fighting game characters ever. And even to me at the time, NBC One's an interesting like hodgepodge because it combines all these Capcom characters and a lot of stuff from games that you just I don't even know if I heard of. Like I was a Capcom fan since like Mega Man One and Mega Man Two, right? But did I ever hear of Captain Commando? No. Until Marvel One, I didn't. Did I ever actually hear of Strider? I didn't. Did I know who really? Jin Sautume was? Who was actually from a weird, obscure, you know, robot fighting game that Capcom had just released not even that long before it? I had, I'm like, who the hell are these guys? Are they cool? They're cool as fuck. <laughs> like they're super yep. cool. But I'm like, I, I, I actually don't know who a lot of these characters are. The Marvel side was way more familiar because they chose like mm-hmm. Gambit and Venom, and they chose to get rid of like a lot of mainstay like X Men characters and stuff like that. I think the biggest downside of NBC One's roster is that there's not a lot of like female characters like at all. It's essentially Morgan and Chun Li. I think you that's- got role. 
<laughs> they, oh well and, yeah and, and and lilith lilith yeah well that's the thing it's like every, every other character is like a secret a secret not morrigan you know not yep. Mega Man <laughs> character Jin was the only character on the Capcom side I didn't know because I had played Captain Commando beat em ups before. Sure. And and Strider, like even though I didn't play Genesis Strider growing up, I knew of Strider. Um, Hayato was one I was like, wait, was uh, was Hayato? No, Hayato's in, in Marvel that? Two. He's in Marvel Two. Okay. Well, uh, regardless, the Marvel Two when I saw him, I was like, yeah, he's from gladiators in space what guardians of the galaxy <laughs> not star wars not star wars but yeah jim jim was the one who was like I don't, I don't know because he's not even in his own fighting game in yeah a way. He's, he's just a pilot he's just a pilot so you don't directly control him you, do, you you control uh, uh blastia or whatever right Blodia. Uh, Blodia, Blodia. thank you blastia ass blastia that's his <laughs> mecca <laughs> Yeah, I think NBC One executes really well with like having a, a, a super limited roster, but introducing enough new stuff that is mm -hmm. either throwbacks to old stuff and make, making the right choices of some characters. Like, NBC One doesn't even have Iron Man. Like, they, they chose War Machine at the time that because was cool, it was though. like a That's weird, cool, bizarre though. Marvel pick, you know, because Iron Man was on his like, not doing as good, I guess. Yeah, I would. I would love. I think around that time they had the dumbest version of the Punisher ever in the comics, where he was like an angel sent from heaven, and he had these Uzis that were on fire. What and he'd shoot you, and you'd go straight to hell. He time. should have been in so, Marvel versus so it's like Capcom. A, it's like a, so it's like that a hell gun. Time to go to bed. There's no way that's real. Yeah, that's real. It's There's real. No, I, don't. I know it sounds like something I wrote, but it's not. You know, it um, like he could have beaten onslaught if he, it was one on one. No, no problem. He yeah, just, yeah he just he just sent him straight to hell. That's it, right? Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> you can't exactly. get you can't get back. Yeah. Uh, so you want to go into our individual characters? Now? I think it's time now feeling? that we have like it's some perspective some? of rosters. Now that we have like an idea of uh. Which games are kind of like our, our favorite rosters of characters? I think we all probably have something favorite of ours that come from the games we just mentioned. Let's actually get into like the personal picks and we'll sort of round robin it until we run out of time. So okay. uh, I guess I'll start right with the most like basic of fighting game fundamental love between character and gameplay. I mm -hmm. am going to make a wild guess that uh, I'm going to make a wild guess that Justin Wong <laughs> secretly really loves this character. And the character is Street Fighter Force Rufus. Rufus. Oh, uh, man. You know what the crazy part was, is Rufus is actually not in my top 10. Okay. Good. Yeah, Rufus, I'm glad. Yeah, Rufus is not <laughs> in my top 10. that. <laughs> All right, I love Rufus and all, but uh, the the re only reason why I think Rufus is like part of me is probably because you know Street Fighter Four was like the the revival of fighting games. So a lot of people were eyes. There was the GameStop events. Evo was big, and mm -hmm. people saw me play Rufus, and that's like, oh, Justin loves Rufus. But that was just the character I enjoyed playing at the time. He but, was yeah, fucking I would say, good, man. <laughs> yeah, he was great. Damage, you know, and everything. But dive kicks, space opera symphony, you know, raise the roof. Um, but I would say my first character of all time, favorite character of all time, um, it's going to be Storm. Storm from Mars Catcom. See, uh, that was the two, easy pick. x Street Fighter, yeah. Adam. You know, I play Storm in every fighting game possible even yeah. x-men mutant academy i'm picking storm right <laughs> like any any if i'm playing x-men like four the six player cabinet if i'm not if i'm not storm i'm not playing on the cabinet like straight up so that's it was storm because of a an attachment to her introduction in a game or was it because of something that came before that made you just want to play storm and everything you know, I, I watched the X-Men cartoon growing up. I think everyone has. Yeah. yeah. And I just love Storm and I get like she was just so sick. Um, she was just so strong and powerful. And I just like the fact that she controls weather. I'm a I'm a big fan of elements, like that's like fire, ice. I love that I love that uh type of stuff. So the fact that Storm can control the weather and that you could do it in a fighting game, I thought that was like the sickest thing ever. 
So I was going to, I'm really glad you, you talked about it a bit more than out, like outside of fighting games. Cause was, as I was making like a, you know, list of characters in my head, I was going, is this because I like that character outside of fighting games? Cause they're from something else like uh final fight characters or like Marvel characters. Like, do I really like Wolverine because he's in a fighting game or do I just like Wolverine? So you Maybe you like him because he's from Canada. <laughs> he's Canadian. Um, I mean, I do, but I actually have a character that I'm like, I you'll you you would never guess this character in like a thousand years. They are a very new character, but uh, before I get there, I'm just glad you set a precedent for it because I'm like, if you really love a character and you still love like before that because of the cartoon, but if you then love them just as much in fighting games, because if a character is not good or fun to play when they're adapted into a fighting game, like then then you know the, the whole thing kind of falls apart like oh i really love negan in walking dead <laughs> but oh his gameplay i just can't so and you, you know, can't. <laughs> i i completely sympathize i think matt i don't know how you feel about this situation but i definitely know that me and you have a direct attachment to this character because we are of similar demographic and existed mm -hmm. in similar time periods on this planet but we had been wanting Spawn in something for a hell of a long time, like a very he got Soul long Calibur, time. right? He's a yeah. Soul Calibur. Well, yeah, I mean, but we I never been, got to play that Calibur, version as Spawn a kid. Was like, though Spawn in Soul Calibur is barely Spawn. Like he has a he has a move set that just doesn't really make much sense, and he has little Spawn isms. So to yeah. me, like Spawn was kind of cool in Soul Calibur too, but never really like scratch that itch where it's like oh yeah we would need to spawn with guns and we need him with like swords and all this variety of stuff right yeah and like he was locked in the xbox jail i could yes. not play oh, as him because i i was gamecube warrior for life like when oh, so you got Caliber, yeah yeah when soul Calibur came to the the gamecube i was just like oh fuck all these other versions the gamecube is the greatest fighting game console <laughs> of all time uh calcom versus snk easy operation bitch like i was just <laughs> so into it then and when i saw spawn like I was jealous. I was not jealous of Heihachi at the time because I was just like, well, it's just Heihachi. He doesn't have weapons. You know, like it, it was a at the time. I don't know if you guys agree, but that was a bad fit. Like, could you not have taken Yoshimitsu? Oh, wait, you did that already. Do, yeah, <laughs> so, you did that already. Did, did you do you know, like the old lore behind that? No. So it what wasn't you supposed to be Heihachi. Heihachi was actually a last minute addition, according hmm. to uh tales untold by time the the legends pass through the wind as you fuck like type of stuff <laughs> uh apparently the playstation version was supposed to have cloud Shut oh up. my god that would have been crazy not, they just could not finalize it it actually got That's really crazy. far uh to the point where he might have had some assets in game but they had to scrap all of it because it just didn't square just didn't play ball uh so the Sony version had to like last minute just like throw in Heihachi. So imagine how crazy Soul Calibur 2 would have been if the Xbox had Spawn, the GameCube had Link, and the PlayStation version had Cloud. I okay, listen, that's you would have all three. That's, mu that's, mu <laughs> <laughs> that's much better than what like it, it became to be. But then Spawn is still like the weird outlier. He definitely not is. Yeah. If it was 1993, then that the spawn would have been because he was like the hottest character of that yeah. year or whatever. But in like 2002, it's like I, I, you know, like it wasn't even 97 where he had spawned the Eternal uh, come out on the PlayStation and then his movie. Like that makes a bit more sense. But then it's like then it has to be gap. Master Chief. It has to be Master Chief at that point. And there was no way he no way he's relic he's got to be in dead or alive. I can't have <laughs> Namco have have that. So that would have been cool, but it would also be t the PS2 version would th therefore be the highest selling version because the last time I counted when I looked it up, it was like the GameCube version because of Link. Of course, because it was like the best character. Of, of course. course, it was the best selling. But it, then then Cloud would have completely like yeah. eclipsed that. You would have easily. had like the Smash Brothers essential element like kick in where it was just like, no, holy, like the, the absolute astronomical. There's a meteor impact and the whole earth is shattering type of video game announcement. Because even mm -hmm. Soul Calibur had that kind of stuff later with, like, guest characters, you know? But, granted, 
I think that is, once again, you can write it in your Matthew's awesome podcast notebook, uh, <laughs> best fighting game, like okay, guest characters and stuff like that. We definitely. Yeah, absolutely. We didn't have yeah, that. Yeah, how yeah. did we not have that in before? Earth shattering okay. it was that Darth <laughs> Vader's and Soul Calibur. What and the Yoda? hell is going on? A lot of Wait, people but, forget that. I mentioned it yeah. in a video. Everyone's like, when did that happen? <laughs> And Wait, before, like, before we move on, right? So, like, you mentioned Spawn, and for some reason, I don't know if I'm making this game in my head or if I'm mashing in my head, but wasn't there a Spawn game where it's like a Power Stone type of vibe? Yes. Yes. Right? Spawn in the Demon's Hand? Yeah. Is that what it's called? It's a Capcom game. Yeah, it's a game. Capcom game. It's a Capcom? I mean... <laughs> yeah. It's, All it's right, a, Capcom. It's a Power Stone-like, to- <laughs> like, Unreal Tournament game. Yeah. yeah. I it's thought that was super, a cool game. It, me, it's me and super Matt have played cool. it together. Yeah, we, we held we hands while we played it. it. <laughs> we held hands and played it together. <laughs> and it's got like a we crazy start- roster, but it is an insanely drank ass game. It's like, like it's 50 cool. yeah, yeah, characters. Yeah. There's 50 characters There's in that so game. Many characters. 50 characters? Yeah, but like a lot of them are are like bullshit NPCs that have like, oh, like clones. Okay, but, but but there's at least like twenty that are legit characters. Like I could be a cyborg gorilla. Ugh, I could be John Leguizamo. Or I can be like you know rando zombie number one. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. stuff like that. We okay. you, you have you have Todd McFarlane's entire mind palace in that game because here's a guy with guns and chains. Here's a girl in, in, in a thong, and that's it. That's all I got. <laughs> Sexy. You know? Everything's gotta be sexy. <laughs> yeah, no, that game's super sick. I'm so glad that someone brought like uh, uh, episode one of this podcast. We're talking about <laughs> Spawn in the Demon's Hand. I love it. Um, <laughs> it was just in my head. I'm like, it sounded so familiar. <laughs> so, man, Max, you said Spawn. It's like, yeah, cool, awesome. He's in uh, Soul Calibur. But then after that, it was like the fervor of getting him into Mortal Kombat when Mortal Kombat started having all the guest characters yeah. with like MK9 and it was it MKX was always especially. there and MKX especially exactly so when he finally was out it was almost like anticlimactic like I was happy that he's there and he's super well done in that game and has all the shit you want has uh, like really cool fatalities that Yeah I agree. Are, I think he's I think know? he's the best realization of spawn like in anything outside of the original comics. I think visually you can't compare it. You yeah. can't. Uh, the only thing I'd say is that I actually would probably have wanted him more in MKX because that course. was at the the time where it's like, oh, it'd been so cool to get him in yeah. there then. But you know, they, it it worked out in the end. But uh, Spawn is not anywhere in my list, though. Is he not? I, I would love to guess. All right, so I, I'm going to make. I I feel like I have a decent understanding of both like Justin's competitive history and love for characters, and potentially yours too. And my so, stupid edge lord shit. Yes, and <laughs> I I am going to say that potentially, potentially. Matt McMuscles f- top five. I'm going to say it's in top five favorite okay. fighting game characters ever is one that technically got added later into a game which okay. is zubaz no no really no there's no, no, there's no, no, no deep no, no, no. personal like interconnected emotional attachment no because he was already from like a capcom thing you know yeah. it's like it's like i didn't discuss I didn't discover him <laughs> and he was only and he was forced into things via Kickstarter money. You know what I mean? It's like it's like you're shoehorning him. It's not natural. I but I understand your train of thought. Okay. There uh, hell I'm over I put, two, but that's okay. I put him in a game that I worked on, the takeover. Like he's a, so I I I totally get where you're coming from, but no, not quite. Like he no, might fuck be him. He might be in like a top. Tw- he might be in like a top twenty, like in the back half. Oh man! But Zubaz he's- <laughs> got pushed to top twenty. Top twenty. But, but the it's poor it's, guy. It's also because he's too jokey. One yeah, thing you'll see. Yeah, he's pretty. It, it, if I was to give you like my full list, I don't have like a joke. Like I don't have a Dan. I don't like or a Dan like like character. I don't have a black. Like, I don't have a character that are too jokey. They're either like normal or they're edgy. You know. All right, like, I got you, you man. I, mean? I got you. I got you right okay. now. So okay, Shaquille I want, I want, O'Neal. Let, let, let Justin go. Who? Well, Shaquille O'Neal. Shaquille O'Neal from Shaq Fu. <laughs> no, no, no. Shaq just kidding. Just kidding. Okay, but if if, I, if from my guess, I feel like you might like Birdie from Final Fight. Uh, who? Birdie. Birdie. 
Birdie from the Alpha, Alpha <laughs> That's series. Definitely a no. <laughs> That's no. Like, oh, well, what? well he's, first you said Birdie from Final Fight. Sorry, yeah, like, yeah, Bird Birdie, Birdie, Birdie from Alpha. Okay, that's not a bad guess. He's not in there, but I really did like him in Alpha 2. Like, I played as Birdie, and I was kind of into him then, but guess what? He kind of turned into a joke character in yeah, Street Fighter Five, and he that pulls kinda... out a big-ass donut now. He won Calf Cuff Cuff. He can't be no joke character. Dude, he He's... pulls out a donut the size of his body and munches down. I mean, joke, you know, that's true. He, he throws out a booger, too. That, that was pretty Joke funny. character in terms of personality and, like, you know, a bit of, like, the, the stuff around him. He's like, yeah, all right, all right, a joke right. character in five, but he's godlike. Yeah, 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 so. He's also Karen's, like, bodyguard. Okay, so I, do we want to take one more guess at, like, me and I'll just tell you a character that I have in there? Or do we want to so just... So, fighting game specific, character that Matt loves okay i'm gonna i'm gonna try to go someplace safe here i'm gonna go Say, into please. a or uh, an interesting there's like a dark path <laughs> and then there's like a lit path through the woods that's all like <laughs> sparkly and there's chipmunks and shit and i'm gonna go through the light path and i'm gonna say okay. saber wolf from killer instinct close but shit. not quite Okay, really? I'll, oh, I, I, then, I, then I will tell you the character from KI that I have in my list. Because in my head, I'm like, I, I want to pick one or two characters from a thing. Like, okay. And what are the characters that stand out for me? Saberwolf was at a point at the start of KI... 2003, uh, sorry, 2013, season one. I was like, oh yeah, Saberwolf. Love Saberwolf. Love his gameplay. I like what they did with his story. I like all his customizations. I love his Benny color. And, you know, so... I was really into Saberwolf at that point, but when, okay, well, then I'll give you another guess. I'll, I'll let you guess. When KI3 was, uh, KI2013 was completed, Ty Roster was there, a character replaced Saberwolf. I'm like, no, that's my KI character. Any guesses? So therefore so it has by, to- By the it, time the roster was finished, oh, 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 I'm an idiot. It's Hisako. It's Hisako! Yeah, I'm an idiot. Oh, I, I love, Hisako's a really cool character. That was a very good design. Yeah. I, and then I, I'd argue I might I might share a character with you because Hisako, in my opinion, is like one of, if not the greatest female fighting game characters of all time. Yeah, I like and I was there at the um, when they revealed Hisako at PAX East the one year where uh, Iron Galaxy was doing the presentations and yeah. I just saw the character. And like outside of that, I'm like a huge fan of like Japanese horror movies. So like The Grudge, Juon, well, like, I, I've seen lots of ones and I really like those characters and having seen that character realize in a fighting game or any sort of game that can highlight them on a high animation level and presentation level. And they just knocked it out of the park. Yeah. And yeah. Just, just Hisako's walking animation, not her dash, just the walking animation, which is dragging <laughs> her. Like it weighs like a thousand pounds. She's like dragging it across. It's so sick. And all their other animations, like her dashes, her, um, her, uh, teleport, um, just a little crawl and everything her. like that. Her yep. creepy crawl, like her win at like everything about her. And even gameplay wise, it's like, all right, I love everything you've done. You know, a attitude wise, visually, like what's the gameplay like? I'm like, this gameplay is really interesting. You could look at this character and be like, oh, they have a Rekka and that's it. Call it a day. Yeah. It's like, no, it's a counter character. It's a grappler character. Yeah. It has like some elements of all of them. The and it's, and it's like, it all syncs up to a really unique character that hasn't been done before or since, at least not exactly in that way. Yeah, and the, the coolest part is that if you actually want to take a character archetype and compare her the most to another character gameplay-wise, because Killer Instinct, I mean, for anybody that knows KI, it's, it's a parody fighting game. It always has been since, mm -hmm. like, 1994. It just parodies other fighting games and makes its own thing out of it. And gameplay, that is absolutely the case with KI, where so many characters in KI are just taking things from, like, other fighting games. Her biggest influence is Makoto from Third Strike. Like her game plan is I never really like, like I think in fact her forward frame data of like her forward dash because she has a crazy forward dash and a really mm -hmm. crappy back dash which is literally Makoto third strike approach and then she has her command grab which she gets yeah. like a combo after yeah, it's like yeah. the same it's the same thing and to be honest the devs that uh, made third strike online edition also made Hisako it's true. <laughs> so it's like yeah. the frame data is really similar in terms of reaction time of like the dash so. Yeah, she she is mostly like Makoto uh, in in blood than most most other fighting in characters. 
that's I never thought of it like that. But now that that you're saying it, she even has the air special with yep, the, the air special. Like, yeah, it's like her axe kick. Holy crap! I, I mean, and you, you already know the the comparison to like Shadow Jago and like Dimitri and stuff like that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's got so so many, so many uh, similarities. Shadow Jago, actually, I have that kind of there as well. He's he's upper echelon ki character for me. I agree, and I I know that you play him like you know uh, quite a bit, and I'm like this is uh, okay. Personally, I'm not going to say like of all time, like I think in the zeitgeist of of fighting games, but personally for me, I'm like, this is the best evil character. I agree. Of, I uh, actually agree. The whole the whole package. Yeah. It's because even though we mentioned, uh, Justin mentioned Violent Ken, and that's really cool conceptually, like gameplay wise, it's, you know, it's Ken, it's essentially. Um, but Shadow Jago has so much nuance and, and things that set him apart. And his design is so sick, has the sickest colors. Just Dude. everything about him is just mwah, perfect. I completely agree with you. We're like, if we're going to talk like the, the Jin to Devil Jin, the Ryu to Evil, Evil Ryu, Ryu yeah. if we're talking like Jago to Shadow Jago, I think Shadow Jago is the top nom for like, oh, this is the best, like, of the, these weird like alter characters where you're just like, you know, Ken to violent Ken type of stuff. This mm. is the best one. Mario to Luigi. You know what I mean? This is the same. This is like the way you do it. What about, I, what about God Rugal? I, I, God Rugal. It kind of has like the Akuma vibe into it. He does. I almost I feel mean, like it's cheating because God Rugal is so he's a boss. He's so <laughs> buck fusted, you know, <laughs> he just looks so cool. He does look cool. He does. I agree. He does. Yeah, that's like um, that's like almost comparing Akuma to like Shin Akuma, but I guess that's sort of the same thing, you know. I mean, it's like like eviler Akuma at that point. Like, yeah, you, yeah, you I know? think yeah that that's the good comparison. You you're going from like uh the polar opposite character where it's like oh, the evil good to version evil. to bad version. Yeah. Rugal's uh. just like bad version to extra bad. So Max, I want to throw out an easy one to you, I because I just we we gotta get to him. Your top five is Rock Howard. I don't know where. But top five is in rock is rock Howard. Well, yes. Congratulations, Matthew. I'm <laughs> zero for three, and you are beating me so far in this not game. Uh, but yes, uh, Rock Howard, one hundred percent, is one of my favorite fighting game characters ever. Also, a, a fighting game character that hasn't been in a ton of stuff, even though it seems like he's been in like an absolute metric shit ton of games. I'm just going to completely ignore his appearance in Maximum Impact one and two. Uh, but yeah, I, I first discovered Rock in uh, CVS2. So CVS2 is a game that pretty much introduced me to a lot of SNK. And weirdly enough, I, 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 I like this character because of my like time frame and age, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I discovered Rock in CVS2 about the same age as the character. And I make really deep interpersonal connections to characters. I didn't say my father was born of like Orochi blood or whatever the hell and my burning blood boils. All I'm <laughs> saying is that there was just some some stuff between like the weird Michael Jackson isms that he has with like his jacket. I remembered that you can make like a Michael Jackson version of like Rock Howard in some old Game Facts color editors and stuff like that. <laughs> okay. and I was like, that's so cool. Um, there was just a lot of stuff about that character and the way he looked and just the the whole wing thing. I'm like, this is badass, man. This is just like for some reason, at my age, at that time frame, like this is the shit I am into. So yeah, even when though, he does his when he does his victory pose, and you see like the energy the wings, wings yep. who doesn't like get thirsty right there? <laughs> who doesn't get hype right there? And just something about like his design, like just the short jacket and the the fucking pants, and like everything about the way like he moves and stuff. I, I was a big appreciation of like making cool characters and drawing like absolutely uh, every waking moment of my life at the time frame because I was uh, studying to be like an animation major. So like a lot of my characters already resembled Rock in like many ways. And mm -hmm. even before I had played CVS too. So I was just like, dang, this character's just like everything. And he just looks so cool. And then you find out his history, how he's technically like Terry Bogard's son. And but his dad is an evil shithead and Terry's trying to protect him from that. I'm like, this is fucking cool. This is so cool. Like, I'm, this is my jam. So I even though like a lot of the stuff that I love about, you know, Rock Howard um, is deeply rooted to me, like being a teenager, like being like 17 or something like that. When I first discovered that character, mm -hmm. um, I I'd say uh, he still sticks with me. Right. Th that's like a character that brings you back. Right. Immediately. I feel like you get really attached to stuff in your teenage years that'll follow with you for like the rest of your life. <laughs> and that's like that character for me. 
Uh, the other thing about him, though, that I think is important, especially nowadays, is that he was effortless, yeah, effortlessly cool in the sense that uh, like we're going to be playing King of Fighters uh, 15 pretty soon. They have these new heroes that I think are way forced to look cool and be like, look at how cool these characters are. Do you mean look like at- the spray paint girl? Uh, That's, uh, she's from uh, Splatoon, uh, isn't she? I, <laughs> I'm mostly talking about new hero dude with the headphones. Oh, oh yeah. Oh. Not, Shun- not Shun- spray paint boy. Sh- Shunin? Shunin or whatever? Shunin. 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 There, there's, there's characters that you can over-design. You can have them do cool things like be a graffiti artist or a be like, what is cool? What are kids into? And you can go one step too far. And I think some characters, there's, there's examples in other games. Uh, I think, for example... Namco really tried to make us like Lars, and <laughs> no one was having it. Nobody no was one. Having it. You didn't. You didn't like his Dragon be... Ball hair. Yeah, yeah. This is exactly the Dragon Ball hair. And I know there's someone in the comments that's going to be like, "What are you talking about? Lars is the coolest." No, he's not. Sorry. <laughs> um, but now I kind of like. Oh, Lars is lame. So I kind of like him now in a sense. So it's fine. But yeah, people, did the, you like him? Because people didn't like him. You like the underdog aspect of him now. I, Exactly. He rolls back like the counter rolls back over a zero and now he's like a 12 now. He's, he's <laughs> okay. So cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so Rock at the time when he was like, because I because I played Garou when it was out like in 99 and I was like, oh, look, that's this guy. He's like the new Terry. Oh, no, Terry's here. Then what is this guy? Oh, he's a cool mix of Terry and Geese. That's so different because street fighter 3 didn't really do that like it presented the characters like this this is kind of like the new guile you know remy but they had no lore to that effect it was just like yeah yeah, yeah here's exactly. a function like the, the best example is like necro <laughs> like necro was a mix of dalsam and blanca technically Dalsim like he can do blanca. electricity but he was a stretchy guy but was he related to Bla- blomza was he related to blomza? blanca or dalsam in any way no no, he was a crazy Russian guy with a with a girl following him around. Mm-hmm. Um, why don't we throw back over to Justin? Would we want to try to do a guess on him now? Uh, yeah, you 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 guess you guesstimate on Justin's. I'm still zero for one with with Jay over here. Okay, um, I, I feel like I'm a pretty open book as well too when it comes to characters. Um, I th- I'm kind of cheating here because you've you've mentioned this character once or twice uh, in in some other meetings that we've had. I, I think my Shiranui is somewhere there, or or no, or am my I off is, base on that? You're close. My is not there. Uh, not there. I would say the her polar opposite um, would be from the Capcom side, Chung Lee. Okay, right. Well, that, that, was yeah. real, all, that was the yeah, real. That's, that's, it's safe, but it, it's just because the fact that she always kept go, like her win quote was like, "I'm the strongest woman in the world," and that's kind of like her title. That's like so sick right that's like literally your title for life like everyone knows that Mm -hmm. you're the strongest woman in the world and she's one of those characters that i played in like every game anytime a new street fighter game comes out or marvel game and i see her in there i have to try her the only time i never tried her was probably in fortnite i don't know what she was doing in fortnite but every other chung lee i played the crap out of her and i and i i love her like even street fighter the movie uh you know even though the movie was you know it was fun to watch it wasn't great but i loved her as a character in there the the, the street fighter animated movie with the vega and chung lee scene best scene oh, in yeah, the yeah, whole yeah. movie oh, God, yeah. right so everything chung lee related i'm like pretty obsessed for like so, i probably bought all the street fighter 5 skins you know so how many street fighter 5 skins also, there are I also, so much she has what like 18 skins like, so, yeah, yeah so probably much more more yeah no okay. she has a lot like yeah she, she has lot. way more it's like than everybody it must else. be like 200 dollars worth just of skins yeah. of chung lee alone so they, the uh, aki men went ham <laughs> <laughs> he was like i'll do this for free you know um <laughs> see i chung lee is actually really high up there for me but i almost think like certain characters are so iconic and so like in- like ingrained. Sta- ingrained that i can't actually pick them same here like but but like ken is one and Chun Li is one, and like I don't, I don't in my list. I don't even have a Mortal Kombat character because I there are Mortal Kombat characters I do like, but I'm also I'm like Scorpion. He's there, but I'm like it, it's Scorpion, you know. Like I, it almost I, feels like you're cheating. It almost feels like I'm cheating, but also it is like my truth is that I actually wouldn't pick Scorpion, uh, just in general, even though I do like him because 
Yeah, I think a lot of it has to do with, you know, the ninja characters in Mortal Kombat. They're so, I wouldn't say interchangeable, but you know, like they're always I mean? like, there. They're always there. They all have differences and I, and I get that, but it's like, I, I would have Chun-Li. Some of my favorite like artwork, like video game artwork of all time is like Chun-Li sitting on an oil drum, uh, eating a bun. Yeah. And I'm like, that looks so awesome. Or that one where she has her, I think she's also sitting on like a crate or something and it, it's, put, it's done by Nishimura. And yeah. uh, she has her legs crossed yeah. and she's just like looking at you with like this, like, like wink or whatever. And I'm like, that looks like, that's like the best video. It encapsulates that character so perfectly, but I don't know what it is where it, it holds me back from like going, but this is a character I lit, like, eh, it's like my all time favorite. There's just something I, about a few characters where I'm like, they, they're just, they're just a little bit below. You they're know? like, it, it's like, it's like saying your favorite Nintendo character is like Mario, you know? It, even link it, they're, even they're so like in ingrained territory. and i don't think that's bad because chun li no. has gone through a lot of alterations like over the years and i feel they've nailed it every single time right where they've actually tried to change this character instead of just not changing ryu you know where ryu is just always going to technically be ryu in a slightly younger version of ryu no like between street fighter 2 to street fighter alpha they completely changed the way chun li looks and and i loved her alpha yeah. look and man her alpha, alpha i was like alpha looks cool you know? and, and I think the most important part is just like the fact that she's known as like this graceful fighting game character and the fact that they she went through so many changes and what you were able to still keep that gracefulness of her in terms of like her play style and how she moves and how she runs around the whole stage. Yeah, they really did an amazing job with that, like in every version of Street Fighter, except for Mario's healthy, Capcom 2. I got a healthy counter to you, Justin, where uh, if you want to talk about games that made me absolutely frigging despise a character we could talk about street fighter 3 third strike and chun li she's uh, fair and balanced she's not even that good despise this character <laughs> this chick sucks i hate her like that's you, if there are well, gameplay will do magical things to characters sometimes and it'll make you absolutely hate characters you know, it's one That's of those true. things where it's very hard to balance specific characters in fighting games. You know, the funny part about Street Fighter 3 Third Strike, you mentioned that. Uh, the first time Third Strike ever came out in Chinatown Fair, after one month of the game released, we had a tournament and Chung Lee's SA2 was banned. Good. We, you got the band, a uh, super, not the character, the super. The super. Good. Yeah. <laughs> good. I mean, that was a good call. It should have stuck. <laughs> but, but, but like, let's say that uh, a character in Third Strike can access all their supers at, at any given time, like traditional Street Fighter, not have like super art selection. Would the if that were true, would, would, the, would that player just be banned? Don't do that input. No, that would actually like, balance Chun because it would um, it would make her super bar bigger. It would actually hmm. like balance the character because like the the size of the super bar changes, so she would That's, not get access true. to the super all the time. Uh, because it, it, yeah. it would have to make the bars like as big as it could be. Like yeah, pretty to much. For like that. if you yeah, made it like true, maximum size, that would actually make Ch that would actually bring Chun Li down a tier potentially. Mm, interesting. Because she the, the so many characters in Third Strike are about getting to the meter, and once yep. you're at the meter, like the party begins. <laughs> um since since max is a little bit of an open book on the characters he likes because a lot of his content is focused around <laughs> these are the cool characters i like i want to see justin do you think we could like pick an outlier that like let's try to see if we can get like to a, a character that he's actually like yeah i really like that character but it's not one that he's talked about Mm, do you want, like see. you'll take a guess and i'll you take like actually, like like, like, like an obscure some, guess like, i have to be reminded of some characters that just like because there's there's quite a few now that I, I just love that i think are super cool like hisako was a good example i'm like yeah dude hisako is just like easily one of the greatest female fighting game characters of all time and i've never actually been really good with her but her inclusion makes me so happy like she's mm -hmm. like the best so i could easily put her in like a top five situation but you might remind like, me and i'm like yeah you know what i agree with that Here's an example. I don't know what characters you like in Soul Calibur. Like I've watched you play like a bit of Soul Calibur here and there, but it's like, right. I actually don't have that information ready about what character you like. So I'm right. just gonna I'm for, for I'm, let's just go for Soul Calibur. Let's try to I'm gonna say mm. that you really enjoy. Um, don't say my pick, please. <laughs> I'll try not to. I'm gonna say you really enjoy Mitsurugi. Okay. Very, that's a good that's choice. A very good guess. I'll let Justin that's a very go good next. Choice. So I was I was thinking between Mitsurugi or uh, Nightmare. Oh, oh. 
Nightmare. So, That's how I was Mitsuru my, I Yugi and Nightmare. nightmare. Uh, I am happy to uh, uh, pronounce that both of you are technically wrong. I would say <laughs> technically uh, wrong. I would it definitely. I I have played Mitsuru Yugi in almost like uh, almost every Soul Calibur game for the most part. One and two, the, oh. one into the most, but. Not a, not a favorite, not a personal favorite. He's just like the Ryu of the game, so you got to play him. Uh, easily one of my favorite fighting game characters of all time in top five is Siegfried. I know oh, the other version. This the other version. Yeah. I should have and, known and because would, he's a blonde like guy with that, a cool yeah, that, scarf. I know. I got You have to go with blonde characters from now on. <laughs> oh, well, 12, okay, right. So number one, uh, once again, another character from my teenage years that like sort of like oh this i want this character to be so like dumb. me in the game or something like that like that kind of shit yeah siegfried was the soul caliber one character that was like dang this guy's big ass sword and he's cool look and he's got all his armor and yada <laughs> and then soul caliber 2 comes up it's technically nightmare right he's he's technically it they is. don't really give yeah. siegfried a unique move set until uh soul caliber 3 but really i i, I never like the I, I i like nightmare but i don't think i like the the version of like nightmare with the armor and all that crazy stuff. I like Soul Calibur 2 Siegfried when he had like the crazy jacked up arm and you could actually see him and he talked with the demonic voice because it was Siegfried turned, you know? I'm like, that's, I would say Soul Calibur 2, um, the Siegfried version of Nightmare is arguably one of my favorite fighting game characters ever. And then now, if we go to now, like, yeah, the way they've changed Siegfried over the years, I've definitely gravitated more towards Siegfried when they separated those characters in Soul Calibur 3. So, yeah, Siegfried as soon as is easily. You said as soon as it said our choices are technically wrong, I just, yeah. in my head, I was like, oh my god, it's Siegfried. It's of Siegfried. course. <laughs> there's, <laughs> oh god, a, there's a costume that he has a cool scarf on. It's fucking Siegfried. I <laughs> it was the Soul Calibur 3 version, yeah. That yeah. was did it. Damn. Uh, Damn. All right, so we got to guess. Me me and Justin got to guess one of Matt's, because we're, we're getting... We're getting towards the end. We got about like 10 to 15 more minutes to start start running through these characters. Okay. Um, Matt, give us a hint. Like give I, us something I, give us like, the game. I, I can give you I can give you a hint. I okay. have two Okay, that that's actually too easy. Um I have a third a Street Fighter 3 character in there, specifically one that's that started in Street Fighter 3. I, I already Tekken, know what it is. Okay, I have a Tekken 3 character. And just to mix it up, I have a Virtua Fighter character. Interesting. Okay. Um, I got one I'm taking a guess on, Justin, and it's definitely going to be the Street Fighter character. Oh, uh, are you, are you talking about for Matt? Yeah, yeah. For, for Matt. So Matt's got one from Virtua Fighter, yeah. from, from Tekken 3, and from Street Fighter 3. I, yeah, I, I, I have I, no... Unless Matt is like a closet like Boskanovich <laughs> fan or something weird like that, then I really don't know what the heck Tekken 3s is. Yeah, I don't even know the Tekken 3 roster. <laughs> I feel like I can guess I I can guess Third Strike. I feel like I can guess it. Okay, so I gotta okay, let me go back. Go first. And I'm going to look into Matt, which decade virtual fighter are we talking about? Nineties no. or two thousands? Nineties. Okay. <laughs> uh um okay all right justin go first or you, you, go first okay. justin right now go I'm, ahead. I'm going to i'm going to guess that for street fighter 3 you are a fan of q no i would okay so for street no? fighter 3 it was definitely alex it's alex okay there we go uh, i like you i like you i did not like you that much at the at first when i actually started you know playing him and looking at his mechanics and like who is this mysterious mysterious man this mysterious um, wanker this, <laughs> um i was like oh yeah, cool uh q is pretty cool i was about to say cool is pretty q um <laughs> so, so so he's he's definitely like i like him he's on my least favorite uh street fighter th uh, third strike character of like new third strike characters like you know 12 is down there and like i still don't really like necro that much but q is 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 pretty up there but um alex from day from day zero from i Street saw Fire three Alex, new generation yep day zero i was just like oh my god he's so, there's something about also giving a street fighter character a distinct personality from where they are from yeah uh, other than the broad strokes like my name he's is from, like, brooklyn or something like that right my name is chun lee i'm from china my name is ken i'm from uh seattle or san francisco america wherever the hell is wherever you know uh the, the western seaboard um 
saying, Cal Clem is saying, this is a character from New York. This is the, 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 the bing bong, like, bing bong. <laughs> he is, he is like, a unique specimen in Capcom history where it's like, no, this character, he's not from Metro City. He's not from whatever. He's from New York. Here's his New York stage. Here's his voice. He's he's a wrestler. He's like an American wrestler, which up, up until that point hadn't been done. Like, obviously, you have Zangief there, different part of the world. But his moveset, and especially his third strike moveset, like Tornado DDT, one of oh, the yeah. worst moves in that game, but the coolest looking coolest throw. Looking. If you can it actually- is the coolest looking for sure. Uh, if you can actually land it and just everything about like his uh, super set. I'm like, these are weird. They have all these different utilities, but hyper bomb. When I saw screenshots in EGM of the hyper bomb, I was like, Oh my God, I couldn't always, believe it. There was always something so cool about Alex to me where you could like back turn a character with certain moves mm-hmm. and then you could grab them and choke them out. I was yeah, like, that was what? the greatest like, one. And that's so changes. bizarre. <laughs> It changes hyper bomb and the PS de fucking resistance. He has like the worst, dumbest story ever to fight in a Street Fighter tournament. <laughs> you beat my master. Yeah, yeah, he beat me, uh, Alex, but I'm okay. I'm 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 recuperating. I'll avenge you! Like I'll beat Gil, I'll kill him. It's like you no, you don't have to just, I'm going. <laughs> and he just leaves I'm and going. <laughs> it was just so dumb, but I'm like, he's a dumb meathead. Like it, it's it's almost the ant- like the the antithesis of Street Fighter characters where they're justified. You killed my father. Um, I need to find the greatest opponents and like better myself. Like I just want to have a good time. You're like there is no issue, Alex. Dude, I I can't even I can't even tell you just having the recent perspective of uh going through like the KOF sagas right between Ash and Nests and Orochi and <laughs> yeah, there being yeah. peaks and valleys in between that. And comparing it to what Capcom was doing story-wise with Street Fighter essentially makes the King of Fighters series look like the goddamn Marvel Cinematic Universe by comparison. MCU. Right? Like, <laughs> it, is, it is so brutally dumb that like nothing really continues Street Fighter's story forward in any way or yeah. has any reverence for like what happens or characters go through any changes. Like, and in KOF, that was, like, every single game. <laughs> like, every game, characters are going through some crazy new thing, you know? When I made a recent uh, retrospective video on Fatal Fury, I'm like, oh, so these characters are from Second South Town. Second South... Okay, let me explain that. See, Se- South Town was destroyed by an orbital space laser in <laughs> KOF 2000, and then I'm like, uh, I'll just never mind. I, I, I don't want to bother. It was like, it just happened? <laughs> <laughs> I... I don't, and it's just the picture of Hydern, and he's like, "We lost the city," and you see this orbital space laser, <laughs> it's just and I'm a like, big hole. and I'm like, "That's dumb." I'm not gonna. And then people correct, they they are correct to correct me, and they're like, "No, you see, Second South Town is because there's a pocket universe where Geese lived. Geese <laughs> never died in KOF. He died oh, wow. in Fatal Fury. So Second South Town doesn't exist in Fatal Fury. That South Town is still intact." And I'm like, <laughs> "The multiverse <laughs> is here. The multiverse. I didn't know that. That's amazing. Yeah, you know that? I didn't know that I didn't until know I that. Uh, and that's I thought I was just to hear like there's a Fatal Fury pocket universe." <laughs> Okay. Like, what? No, it's a K- KOF is independent from uh, Fatal Fury totally. Right, I, know I that. thought that. Th- no, 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 no. But but I thought that Fatal Fury just turned into KOF. Like, oh, um, once KOF 94 started, Real Bout became its own side tourney yeah. that only happened in Southtown. It's like, no, that's not it. KOF, KOF does not exist in Fatal Fury at all. And I was like, I thought it just split. I thought one turned into the other. And the, everyone's like, it Doc ju- Brown. This is, <laughs> Doc this Brown. is KOF here. It just, splits off with Bill Tan and took this thing. Just Charlie from Always Sunny, just, you know, putting everything. And I'm just like, holy crap. And it, it is, a, is it complicated and convoluted? Yes, but it's infinitely more interesting than Street Fighters. Exactly. You know, Street Fighter's story is very utilitarian. It's just here's so if you don't want to get confused, if you want to have some fun characters, it's there and you can enjoy it. But like if you want to get into this shit, you get into the <laughs> orbital space laser destroying South Town. <laughs> you know? I'm really trying so, to think of what the hell your virtual fighter pick was. And I'm gonna say 
I, I thought it was easy, actually. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna say that I hope it's easy. Like based on all the 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 the, the connective moments we've had together when we held hands, I'm gonna say that you love Kage. No. Shit. Can I go My random? Friend. Yeah, I'm gonna go, go random and say Jeffrey. Close. <sighs> Was it Wolfden? Oh, yes. Really? It's Hawkfield? Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> loved really? them. Okay. Loved them. I played the PC version of Virtual Fighter growing up. Virtual Fighter PC. And I just saw Wolf. Like, hey, all the designs in Virtual Fighter 1, it's like, there's not much to go on oh, there. He's a Canadian. I'm an idiot. Dude. <laughs> he, literally, it's also a maple leaf. His his face makeup is the maple leaf <laughs> from the, the, maple the maple leaf. leaf. You don't know. It's not just red. It's not just red face like a paint. Sports mascot. So um, it was only in Virtual Fighter 2, though, where it's like, oh, there's textures now. Oh, look, he's got like a full body, like, you know, pants and whatever. And there, oh, there's 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 some nuance there. And then he has that weird cowboy getups in VF3. Yeah. And and especially in VF4 is where I'm like, holy shit, wolf. Um, again, <laughs> ru wrestlers are a big thing generally for me. Like, I don't like every single one that's been in a fighting game. There's certain characters where I'm like. You know, I don't particularly care for Craig Marduk, you know, Jeffrey. Jeffrey Styles slightly different. It's Pancradium or, or whatever, like Greek wrestling. But like professional wrestlers, I'm usually there. Like I love Armika, obviously love uh, Hugo and Alex. So yeah, I'd say that there's a 75% chance I'm, I'm going to love your pro wrestler. Yeah. You know, so, so that's if just we had me. to like rapid fire a couple more that might be in your in your top pantheon, is Armika one of them? Not in my top pantheon, but I do love her. Like I did order an Armika statue. It's coming, so mm, nice. Um, and so will I. Anyway, so um, I would I would also <laughs> argue that just to keep things a bit more like focus, is Terry Bogard one of yours? Me, yeah. Okay, for sure. Yeah, Terry, just, Terry's like top material. I just didn't want to like you know the, uh, you know like the last couple of picks we we talk about and like it's it's Terry. Yeah. What am I you oh, know what am what I supposed like, to say? I'm like, I'm like bringing it back and I'm like, I, I think it's got to be like, even though he's like a mainstay, he's like the Chun-Li of, of, you know, Fatal Fury SNK-ness now. Or he, like the Ryu. He is, he yeah. is, but, but I want to ask you, is Terry in yours or does Rock overtake him? Or it's like, no, I don't, it, Terry's, I like I Terry, Terry, but Terry like, has grown to me over time, right? And I, I actually think that over the past few years, like in, in a post like fighting ex layer situation smash brothers situation where terry's gotten a lot more recognition and mm. he's been he's been essentially realized in a in a new variety of different ways where we've seen like so many different takes of this character from so many different other companies you realize how yeah. sick he is you know yeah so yeah. i think i think even especially over the past like few years it's made me a bigger terry fan than i than i arguably ever have been however the best version of terry bogard i, I don't think i'd put him in my top 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 um, just to be really nitpicky. Yeah, female Terry. I agree. Gallo. Female Terry. I agree, Max. Female Terry. Yes, uh, that, <laughs> yeah. that's the female other one I keep missing. Is is Tess and K heroines Terry? <laughs> it's Terry spelled with an I. You know, <laughs> Teddy. <laughs> <laughs> so, how about do you, we Justin? Want... If we had a few more to go over, uh, yeah, what are some let's big just rapid for you? fire a couple each. Yeah. All right. So this, I'll give you guys this. This I'll let you guys guess. Uh, this is a Tekken character. Can you give uh, us what? There's a lot of Tekken characters. Tekken Five. One oh, more. I got it. Bit. I got it. Uh, Tekken Five. five. Nina. Oh uh, no, uh, Fang. 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 Fang is Fang. definitely. Yeah. I love no, uh, Chinese Fang's characters. Cool man. Yeah, yeah. He, he was one of my Tekken Five characters. Where I'm like, oh, look at this dude. What do you like? He, what does he do? He punches a mountain and just explodes. Yeah, yeah, bro. Akuma his intro. His Akuma intro in the it. Tekken Five like like uh, arcade intro was so good, and the PS2 yeah. one was like it was like four minutes long. I watched that so often, and Feng Wei's part, he's just kicking ass. And then when he's on the, you saw the rain, and he just beat up the old guy. I thought that was like the most sickest thing. And it's another thing that I'm like a really big into like Chinese lore. So any character that's like chinese like i'm about it like gato is another character that i really love and garo mark of the wolves uh just because he has like that really like resemblance to like my culture so that's another thing why i like picking uh specific characters yun and, and yang usually like, they those... all have that very similar like like fight style like yun and yang and gato and stuff like yun and yang are also chinese as well i'm pretty sure right 
Yeah, Yun was like my main character in like the beginning of Street Fighter 3. It's like gotcha. Street Fighter 3 New Generation and Second Impact. I was all Yun. But then once Chun-Li came out, I switched to Chun-Li. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I, I should have I should have thought of Fang because like, even back then I was just like, this character is so cool. Like he's so he's presented so powerfully. Like he's almost like the new yeah. villain. Like he's not like a main storyline character, but like that that intro especially was like, look at this dude, you know. I need yeah. to watch that intro after after we finish actually. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, um, you, Yeah, you go ahead. If I was gonna to pitch at least like one or two. I think a, a definite for me throughout like all the series is uh, Fulgore for sure. Mm. I don't know if that's Ooh, one of yours as well. Matt, is it? He he is and he isn't. It's it's like remember I was having dinner with Keats once and I was like, so why did you guys ruin Fulgore? <laughs> uh, oh, wow. I I preferred the way Fulgore played uh, on, uh, in season one or whatever, but no, uh, it was just a joke. And he was just like, eh, eh, eh. but um. Fulgore, I think in KI2 was like his height for me. I was like, oh, he's super cool in KI2. There's just the little like uh, accoutrements they made to his color scheme and everything. Yeah. And KI 2013, like it started off really strong and he's, he's there, but like I'd say in KI in general, he's like in my maybe top five, but of all time, like he's, he's just kind of right below, I guess. Yeah. I think like really cool robot characters in general uh really stand out to me and and like fulgore is the epitome of like we're just going to stick the predator and robocop and like a jet fighter into a character and i'm like yes yes and yes so <laughs> yeah fulgore is definitely another another big one of mine um but still not my favorite character of all time so let's 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 boil it down boilerplate here we go give us your reasoning matt what is your favorite fighting game character of all time the number one I, it's actually a character we've already talked about, but it's like almost. I, I kind of said it all by saying it's this character, like it's Terry Bogard. It's just him, everything about him, like his lore, the fact he's just like a relatable dude on the streets that just learned martial arts on his own by himself as a kid growing up on the on the streets of like a hard ass city. Um, it's like his move set, how many times he's been interpreted by other companies and they're all good. They're all yeah. interesting. There's not like a bad version of Terry where it's like, eh, I don't really want to play as him in there. Um, all the anime that you got out of him that all centered around him, uh, yeah. more or less. And it, Cause he's got the most relatable that, story. He yeah. does. And just his actual move set, how dumb all of his, all of his voice clips are, um, how great they are. Just. I guess it's Terry Bogart, but you know, you like, you almost have like a percentage of your mind where you're like, but that's also that character. But I think he edges everyone out for me. Yeah, that's a good call. It's a good call. Justin, how about you? Uh, we, we already mentioned her earlier, but storm was definitely the storm, number huh? one. Yeah. Storm's number one, but Very I'll give cool you pick. another character that, um, I would say I love a lot that we haven't mentioned yet. Um, it's actually, I would say Spider-Man, uh, Spider-Man, really? You go watching the anime, the animated cartoon. I love Spider Man. Spider Man was so sick, um, in terms of the story and just the story in general of like how they portray him in like movies and comics, where he's just pretty much, uh, I would say, a loner, just trying to work hard, trying to fall in love with MJ, and you know, trying to just save the city as the neighborhood. He's about as re- relatable as Terry Bogard. Yep. Yeah. And kind then, of. And then even the gameplay, like his personality in terms of the gameplay, where like the ending, right? Where after he beats you, and he takes a picture for 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 uh, for uh, the Daily Bugle. I think that's like the sickest <laughs> ending ever, right? So 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 that's like the really coolest thing. Be like, he's still always on the hustle. So yeah. I, I would say Spider Man's definitely on my in my top list as well too. Just just real quick, when I first saw Spider Man in Marvel Superheroes and Spider Sting, I was just like, that's so cool. Because in the nineties, <laughs> all we, we we all love dragon punches, you know. Now they're yeah, yeah. It, it, Now anti airs are like a little overused. You're like, yeah, he has an anti air, blah blah blah. You move on. Um, but Spider Sting, I was just like, that's so cool and of course maximum spider i know i know uh max is also a big maximum spider fan so maximum wesker <laughs> Bro, when marvel super street fighter came out and you told me that i could pick two spider mans i was like oh yeah that's my team oh yeah two you can play, you can pick a armored spider man in that yeah, one right armor spider man and then regular spider man yeah so max have we talked about your favorite no. of all time no we haven't not do yet want to do we want to take a final guess at this uh justin do it to wrap it up 
You know, I, I have to say it's probably the character I see Max play a lot on his streams and video. I have to go with Ken. Ken Masters. All right. That's a very good guess. Fuck you. You see that? <laughs> he did like a voice. Because I was also going to say Ken because it, it, it is the safe pick. But at the same time, I think I think he's got a pocket character. We've, we've that he, talked that he about don't... this character in some fashion i didn't i didn't delve into it but we have discussed him a little bit I, i'm still today. gonna go with, i'm still gonna go with ken i don't okay i don't i think he i think he's he's you think he's trying to trick you think he's trying to trick you trying to trick it, it is yeah. it is not ken uh, oh i actually only i i like ken but really i only really like him in a couple like a few games like uh, and it boils down to gameplay reasons, man. I think I like Canon Alpha Two, Third Strike, and CVS Two, but like Street Fighter Four and uh, and Beyond, not so much. Like, okay, I mean, I they did like, them. Too, they did them pretty dirty in Street Fighter Five. They gave them banana hair. Of course, they, nobody they wants like Ken at that point. Dirt, they, like, it's like <laughs> somebody somebody is angry at Ken fans. It was what it feels like for the past few games. Um, <laughs> it's my number one character, fighting character of all time, is Strider Hiryu. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, I totally forgot about that one. You yeah. always I, play Strider. Because in my head, I, I just know that you love Strider a lot in general. And like fighting game, the fact that he's in he's he's been in fighting games was like secondary to me, so it didn't exactly click. It's Damn. actually the opposite. It, it's actually before Marvel One, uh I you had said no you didn't idea know. Yeah, where yeah, yeah. he was from. Uh, I was just like, what is this Strider thing? I didn't know about the NES game. I really didn't know much about the arcade games. And so MB, for all intents and purposes, he was a fighting game character to you first exactly. and foremost. To me, okay. he was the a fighting game character. Like he mm. came from other things, but I didn't know what they were and I didn't care. In yeah. fact, Strider in uh NBC One was like the reason I wanted to learn how to use an arcade stick like proficiently. So I mm. dropped a ton of money on MBC One and I just like 1998, I just like hustled down and I was like, you know what, forget this. I am not going to wait for a home version. I don't care. Like, I remember being on a school bus, like practicing where the button inputs are and stuff like that and being like, OK, so we're not going to do this controller horse shit anymore. I'm going in. And uh, that was like the character that made me want to like learn how to use an arcade stick. Um, so, oh, wow. yeah, Strider and every single iteration of him since does something sort of like unique, different and sort of new. He doesn't play anything like the mvc1 version to the mvc2 version to the mvc3 version to even the mvci version he's like completely different iterations and they're all super fun so you might, that that just reminds me you must be like still pretty bummed you never got to try him in like uh the the, the Capcom all stars of yeah. Capcom of Capcom a little fighting uh, slightly i would i'm almost hoping at some point i can get enough goodwill with some of like the Capcom fighting game guys where i make like a trip to japan and they like let me get some footage of the game because they be actually great. have it they actually have it running like it does work and if they can give me like an exclusive like let's just play a few matches like <laughs> give me like a 30 minutes <laughs> yeah just give us like 30 minutes and we can just jam out on this ancient game that we've only seen arcade location test footage of you know and then they're like no sorry and you're like can i can i lick the machine yeah, <laughs> lick the arcade can I board because guess what we all probably really wanted to play that when i when i uh, did a video about it i was just like oh i forgot hagar is in this the only non-versus well and technically I guess it's like a versus game, but like the only non like uh, Final Fight Revenge or Marvel versus Capcom three like Hagar. I just I I because I love Hagar too. I was gonna almost put that, but I was just like he's in so few fighting games that yeah. like I don't know. But uh, he yeah, uh, Hagar he, definitely. No, he, he does count. And like yeah. I wanted to play Alex in that game, a three D Alex. Obviously, I even wanted to try the new characters, and you know, but it's still such a shame. Capcom would actually. I don't know what they can do to monetize it, but if they put a video at least on their YouTube, they can at least make like a thousand show bucks it off. on that. You know? Yeah, it's just, just show it off. off for sure. Off of like just digging it out of the archives. Exactly. But yeah, Strider's Strider's definitely my favorite and uh, begins all the the scarf memory of like a, me liking a lot of fighting game characters with scarves and stuff like that. The him and like Proto Man kind of share that kind of stuff. So yeah, yeah, yeah and, Strider's uh, definitely and number one for me. And Schneider too, obviously. <laughs> you know, because <laughs> says I like pro wrestlers, and you just slap a scarf on. Max is like, "Woo!" So, god damn. <laughs> <laughs> well, that pretty much does it for uh for our integral triple KO uh podcast. It's weird to think that we're all podcasting right now when it feels like 
where you're just shooting the shit on all this stuff that we've been talking about so much over the past few years and we get to share that with each other. Um, Matt's going to have to delve into the wonderful library of Matt podcast notes and we're going to uh, dig up something really crazy for the next one. Do we even want to get a Definitely. sneak peek of what the next one is? Do we even know? We do not know. Okay. <laughs> but have, it could have been have any of the two coordinated things. as possible. <laughs> no, it, it, it's going to be about fighting games. It, it, uh -huh, there we go. Okay, he just nailed it there. So keep it loosey goosey until like we're about to record. But we we just came up with two with two entire podcasts today. That's guest right. character. Uh, I have god artists and uh, sickest guest characters, and I think yeah. that that those are fantastic. So Sick, you can sickliest definitely, guest characters, sickest, the sickest god artist characters <laughs> or whatever. So. <laughs> Uh, thanks so much for everyone for tuning in and yeah, we'll, we'll see you on the, the next round of triple KO. I have so many things I want to talk about. I'm like going to get off track here. This is the case of a game that was far more popular in Japan than it was in the United States. They never <laughs> went to Mordor. What are you talking about? <laughs> it's kind of weird. <laughs> But there's real detail. There's like wiring underneath. You know, they're, they're one and done. That's yeah. it. Sold yeah. out. So they're super hard to come by. <laughs> <laughs> you heard him, guys. Bring it back. Here oh, we go no, again. No, Round no, two. No. <laughs> <laughs>